Hello friends, the topic for today is 80386 processor state after reset. After a signal on reset pin, certain registers of 80386 are set to predefined values. These values are adequate to enable execution of a bootstrap program, but additional initialization must be performed by software before all the features of the processor can be utilized. In today's video, we are going to discuss the 80386 processor state after reset. Let us start. Welcome to our channel Engineering and Technology for You. If you are not subscribed to our channel, kindly subscribe and press the bell icon so that you get notifications directly for our future videos on this subject. The topic for today is 80386 processor state after reset. Let us start with the introduction. The 80386 DX pro processor, it has an input called reset hash pin. So this involves the reset initialization. So after we make this pin low, because it is active low pin, some resistors of 80386 DX microprocessor, they are set to known state, particularly the CR0, then the DX register, EX register, they are important here. So these known states, such as the contents of EIP register, are sufficient to allow software to begin execution. So softwares then can build data structures in memory such as the global descriptor table, interrupt descriptor tables which are used by the system and application software. And 80386, it has several processing modes. It begins execution in mode which emulates the 8086 processor. This mode is called as the real address mode. If protected mode is to be used where we have the 32 bit instruction set available, the initialization software changes the setting of the mode bit in the CR0 register. So let us see the different states with the different signals. Say first the reset signal, hardware will assert the reset hash signal. Assert means it will make it low at the power up. That means when we switch on the power, as soon as we switch on the power, the reset hash signal will go low and that will in, uh, reset the microprocessor. Hardware may assert the signal at other times. For example, a button may be provided for manually invoking reset in hash. Generally, uh, they provide a reset button or reset switch. So when we press that switch, the processor will reset. So reset also may be the response of hardware to receiving a halt or shutdown indication. So in this way, the reset signal will be used to reset the processor. Then self test at power up so this is very uh, important because as soon as you switch on the power a self test may be requested at the power up so the self test is requested by asserting the signal on the busy hash pin during the falling edge of the reset hash signal that means when the reset is Coming to the end, at that time, we have to make the busy hash pin low. So, that will request the self test. Now, reset initialization takes around 350 to 450 say, clock periods. Whereas, the self test, you select self test, it will take 2 raised to 20 clock periods. So, it's a 
large time compared to the reset. If you uh, take a 16 megahertz processor, then it will take about 33 milliseconds for the self test. So you have to understand this reset is different than self test is different. That's why the status of the processor will be different. Then the contents of EAX register after the say power self test. So it will depend on the result of the power of self test. So if EAX register holds zero or it is clear, that means 8086 has passed the test. And if there is a non-zero value in the EAX register after self-test, it will indicate that processor is faulty. So if the self-test is not requested, the contents of EAX register it will be undefined. Maybe uh, it may be non-zero. That's why the contents of EAX registers they are they are depending on the result of the power of self test. Then next is the contents of DX register. So DX register it holds a component identifier and revision number after reset initialization. So this is shown in the figure. As you can see here, now this total is EDX register out of this. 16 to 31 these are the part of the edx register and this is dx register this total so it has a component identifier so there is the device id and there is a revision number that is the stepping id so if dh it contains value 3 device id if it is 3 it indicates that 386 dx microcursor is there and dl register it contains the unique identity pair of the revisional level so that will uh, define the particular processor that is the revisional level then Next is the state of the CR0 register. So this is again important for the mode of the processor. So the state of CR0 register, it is shown here and will put the processor into real address mode with paging disabled. So the first bit that is PG, if it is 0, that means paging is disabled. And then we have these bits. So this is R, it is reserved. And then TS, there is the task switch. So if it is zero, no task switch. Then EM, that is, there is no uh, monitor coprocessor. And then zero, here the coprocessor is not present. And if it is zero, last bit, that is PE, this protection is not enabled. That means it will be in the real address mode. So this is the state of the CR0 register when, after the power is up. That means the processor will naturally go to the real address mode. Then the state of the flag and other registers which are there in 80386. So uh, the EBX, ECX, ESI, EDI, EBP, ESP. So these are the uh, E base pointer, E stack pointer, then GDTR, global descriptor table register, then LDTR, local descriptor table register, then TR, and debug register. So all this is undefined. So after the power up, this will be undefined. So software should not depend on any 
undefined state and the state of flux and other resistors that is shown here so the flag register is e flux so e flux the status is x x x x 0 0 0 2 then e i p that is the instruction pointer here it is 0 0 0 f f f 0 so that will be uh, the start of the starting address of the program then c s will be 0 f 0 0 and then d s is 0 0 0 0 s s is 0 0 0 e s is 0 0 0 e s is also 0 0 0 g s is also 0 0 so all other segment registers they are 0 then i d t r there is the interrupt descriptor table register so it is the base is 0 and IDTR limit is 0 3 so uh, the DR7 the last register it is also 0 so these settings of these registers whatever we have discussed plus the EBX ECX ESI and the EAX then DX and CR0 register they imply that the processor begins in real address mode with interrupts disabled so the initialization of the processor will be in this way with this we come to the end of this video if you have any questions you can contact me on facebook twitter gmail or instagram then if you like the video press the like button share with your friends and subscribe to our channel engineering and technology for you and don't forget to press the bell icon because if you press the bell icon and subscribe to our channel you will get notifications about the future videos on this topic then thanks for watching have a nice day